Why do A-list celebrity billionaires take the time to do Super Bowl commercials? This is a fascinating question to me. I saw Taylor Swift in a Capital One ad. Let's see if we can get that one up. A while, this wasn't a Super Bowl commercial, but I feel like, yeah, Taylor Swift did a Capital One ad. From Capital One gives you premium travel benefits, like two times miles on every purchase. The noise canceling. You're being too loud. So that's, so Taylor Swift was in this commercial twice. There's two of her. And down here are some comments. I feel like she must have had so much fun with this commercial and prepping to announce the tour. This commercial was an Easter egg for the tour all along? Maybe. And so that, that leads to me to one of the potential answers to this question. But before we get there, let's set out why this is weird. So imagine for a moment that you have a billion dollars. Why are you showing up? Because you make a lot of money doing a commercial like this. Like a celebrity endorsement like that isn't just what you get paid on the day you show up to do the shoot, which might be millions of dollars, but it's also maybe 10 or 20 or 50 million dollars in addition to that. But I think that like there's more to it than this. Because So maybe for like 50 million dollars, Taylor Swift will get out of bed and get on a plane and fly to wherever the commercial shoot is. But like... She's busy. Like, Taylor obviously doesn't need to do any work ever again. So there's something driving her there. But it's not just Taylor Swift. The Super Bowl this year was absolutely drenched in celebrity cameos, which it always is. And it's weird, like, you watch the commercial and it's like, okay, you have to have a cameo from, like, every particular walk of life in America. How representative of the U.S. can we make this commercial? Like, this T-Mobile one has, has Jason Momoa and the guys from Scrubs. So that's, like, that's two different areas, but, like, both super famous folks. Jeremy Renner still back at it after his after his horrifying injury uh, here to promote soy milk, which is great. We don't need to get cows involved in milk anymore. We should leave them alone. This Paramount Plus one where my mother-in-law was like, what is heard? And we said Drew Barrymore. And then she kept being like, no, no, it's Ellen DeGeneres. And it's, no, it's, it's Drew Barrymore. And she's like, no, Drew Barrymore is a blonde. And I'm like, hair colors can change. But yeah, it's got Jean-Luc Picard. It's got several anime. It's got Peppa the Pig is in it. I'm sure that's not free. The Halo guy, Sonic's friend Tails, this man with short shorts, Dora. Probably the most perplexing of all is Larry David showing up who is a billionaire, like made Seinfeld. This man has more money than he could ever spend or than his ancestors could ever spend, right? Larry David shows up to do an ad for cryptocurrency. And you have to ask why, if you have billions of dollars, do you show up to do a Super Bowl commercial? And I have theories. Theory number one, because they're promoting something else. Beyonce showed up to do a Super Bowl commercial because Beyonce is one, getting paid a whole lot of money by Verizon to not just do this commercial, but also be a spokesperson generally. Two, to announce that Beyonce is doing new music, which is very exciting. Like that's, that's like, it ha it's been a while since the last Beyonce album. And this is a way to get paid a bunch of money to promote your new album to the maximum number of people who watch a thing in America at the same time ever. So like Beyonce has plenty of money, but Beyonce obviously also wants to still be a musician, wants people to love what she does, wants to do stadium tours all across the world, wants to sell those out, wants to sell them at very high ticket prices, and that's all very valuable. Like Beyonce is getting paid a lot of different times to get in this commercial, and also is doing something that like is Beyonce's job. Like this is the thing that she loves. She loves to make music, and she loves to be appreciated for her music in various ways. I assume, I don't know Beyonce. All I know is that she was at the Super Bowl with Jay-Z and Jack Dorsey sitting in the corner. This is what buying title gets you, is you get to hang out with Jay-Z at the Super Bowl. No one I'm talking about in this video has, I think, a more complicated relationship with wealth and happiness than Jack Dorsey, who is in a position, like he's in a spot. He he had some things occur to him. But let's look at this. So we got, is that, young, I think that may be Young Gravy or it's somebody like Young Gravy. No, it's the other one, isn't it? <laughs> it's the other one. It's, is it Jack Donahue? <laughs> What's his name? Jack Harrington? What's his name? Jack Harlow? Is it him? Why are there no pictures of him on the front page when I searched his name? Yeah, it's Jack Harlow. That's Jack Harlow, right? Man, I mean, I'm sure that he's very talented, but I actually, even now, I'm not sure. Sorry to Jack Harlow. That's Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow still needs money. Jack Harlow shows up for $2 million, no doubt. Jack Harlow is talking to Ben Affleck, who doesn't need, what's Ben Affleck's net worth, y'all? Celebrity net worth meters, of course, 
me nothing. He has $150 million, you know? That's not Larry David money, but it's plenty. Uh, now, also, I will say that, of course, Ben Affleck does free brand deals for Dunkin' Donuts all the time. We've also got in this video Matt Damon, Tom Brady, Jennifer Lopez, I think... Uh, oh, Jack Harlow was in the title of the video! These people are not promoting something. Like, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon don't have a album coming out soon. So what are they doing here? Theory number two, they got rich, but there's a lot of people around them who didn't get as rich as they did, and they feel obligations to those people. So like the way Hollywood works, all these people have agents, and a lot of these agents have been with the same people for a very long time. They get a percentage, maybe 10% of everything that they do. These guys show up and they do stuff and their agents get a percent. Now, if your agent comes to you and says, I want you to make me 700 grand for one day of work, you're gonna feel like this person's done a lot of good by me. They've got me to where I am. They And like, I feel kind of bad, honestly, for not giving this person 700 grand for one day of work. Like they did a lot of work then. I got very, very rich. They only got a little bit rich, right? Like, they're living in a $5 million house in Los Angeles. <laughs> Not like me, up on the top of whatever the hills are called in Los Angeles. I don't mean the Beverly ones. Uh, whichever ones are most expensive. There's a lot of hills in LA. I think that there might be a component of that, because I feel this already. When my agent delivers me a expensive brand deal and I say no, I feel worse for my agent than I feel for myself. Like, not having that money is fine with me. But I'm like, this person's been working very hard for me and like is like looking down the barrel of a bunch of money that's gonna like be good for their career. It's also gonna be money. I feel bad that I'm not getting that money for that person. And I also have revenue share deals with other people in my life that I feel like bad turning down opportunities to make money when like they need it. I almost feel like when I say no, I have to send them money anyway to be like, I didn't wanna do this. And so you aren't getting paid, but it's my choice. And so I feel bad about that. I think that this is a relatively small piece of the equation, but I think that it might be in there for some people. Theory number three, these people got where they are cause they want people looking at them. This is also, of course, informed by my own experience of celebrity. Like, you don't luck into being Christopher Walken. Like, this is a man who, by uh, like by rights, can be retired. You could spend every day in Jamaica for the rest of your life, Christopher Walken, but you're choosing not to. You're choosing to wake up and go do your job. Arnold Schwarzenegger was the governor of California. He's got Every, like, he's had all of the different kinds of success you can imagine, but he's still chasing something. He's out here reprising a role from my youth, which most people watching this video don't even know about twins. Do you know about twins? Where Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito are twins in a movie? I don't know why they have different accents. Maybe they were separated. I don't remember. Their height differential, I bet, is more than this. I bet Danny DeVito is standing on an apple box right now. This is for the people who had my youth. I thought nothing could beat the Christopher Walken commercial until I saw this right after. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito together again. <laughs> we're nostalgic for twins. Oh my god. These people got successful because they are hungry for something. I am looking at my own experience here and my own understanding of what has driven me, but these people are, I would guess, driven by a desire to feel valued by their world. Success isn't a destination. It's not like a place that you arrive at and then you're there and then you're done. It's not like going on vacation and being in a nice hotel. Success is a thing that you continue to feel, and then you don't sometimes, and then you do again. Like, you find ways in which you aren't successful. Like Larry, I'm not gonna psychoanalyze Larry David, God, that sounds hard, but like, imagine for a moment an imaginary person who has a billion dollars and nonetheless took money to do a cryptocurrency ad. Like, I don't think that he thought it would be good for his reputation necessarily, but I think that he wanted to be appreciated for something else. Again, once you have something like Seinfeld, you never, like, your balloon gets so big and stretched out, it never gets that stretched out again. There's never another opportunity to get that big again. What a Super Bowl ad provides for a celebrity like Larry David, who has a billion dollars already and is not promoting his next album, is the feeling of being valued. You get to see on a piece of paper that somebody wants you so bad that they will pay you millions of dollars 
to work for one day. And then you arrive and they treat you like a king. And you get to do all kinds of cool stuff. You get to hang out with the other celebrities. You get to hang out with your old pal Danny DeVito. And then, in addition to the money, which, even if it isn't a large percentage of their net worth, is a statement about how valuable they are as people. This is what, like, we're humans. We're, like, we're just people. We're stuck being ourselves, right? I'm not saying this is good or bad. We're stuck being ourselves. It's a statement of your value. And it's also a statement that, look, you are valuable enough in your culture that someone wants to put you in the middle of the biggest moment, like the biggest collective moment that our culture has, which is the Super Bowl. 120 million people or something watched the Super Bowl. That's like a third of Americans. That's a lot. And so like somebody is saying that you are valuable enough that we want you in that moment and to pay $7 million just to have the ad play for 30 seconds. That's $14 million a minute. You're worth that much. And plus whatever else they're paying you and everybody else to make the commercial. We are going to put you in the center of American discourse, and we're gonna pay you for it. I feel like there's no better PR, there's no better statement of like, you are valued and valuable by the dominant slice of the culture. Which is why you get like, nostalgic plays. Like at this point, shockingly, we're dealing with it, Aubrey Plaza uh, and Ron Swanson, whose name I've forgotten. You also get like Jack Harlow to show up for the kids, but mostly it's about the people in the middle, which I am now. I am now one of the people in the middle of the like, American experience as a middle-aged man. And I can remember twins and be like, ha ha ha, they're referencing twins without referencing twins. And there's Matt Damon, and there's Michael Sarah, and there's, you know, the people from the show Friends. All of these things that were like, that are wonderful, nostalgic bits of my past, we get to collect them together and they get to feel like they're valued, which they are. My biggest theory is that they're just showing up they want to feel value. And also like they do their job for a reason. I bet it's fun. I bet once you're pretty good at acting, once you're comfortable doing that, once you're an A-list celebrity and everybody's taking extremely good care of you, it's fun to show up and do a shoot day. And it's more fun when everybody's pampering you and taking care of you because they know that you are the most expensive person on set. So that's my theory about why a billionaire shows up to do a Super Bowl commercial. I don't think it's about money. I think it has nothing to do with money and everything to do with money because money is just a surrogate for status, for feeling like a valuable person in your culture. And that, you never stop feeling like you might not be. You never stop feeling like you might lose it. You never stop feeling like you're gonna be forgotten. And the fact that you are Arnold Schwarzenegger, Larry David, Jennifer Aniston, Young Gravy, wasn't in the Super Bowl, Jack Harlow, you're all gonna be forgotten someday. Like, we don't remember the celebrities of 250 years ago. But it makes it fun. Ultimately, I think it's just fun. I think it's fun to get paid a bunch of money to have fun and feel valued. I think I'd do it, and I begrudge them for it, not at all, unless they are selling cryptocurrency or gambling products. In that case, if you're a billionaire and you're showing up to convince your audience to gamble, I think you've made a mistake. Thanks to Jason Parkin with his TikTok for uh, inspiring me to make this video where he asks, what the heck are these people doing? What are they thinking? And of course I welcome your theories because I'm sure that I didn't get it 100% right. I am only very peripherally connected to Hollywood. Though Quinta Brunson, who was in a Super Bowl commercial, is a person I've actually like hung out with before. I feel like Quinta's deal with TurboTax, it might be worth more than all of BuzzFeed now. Which, damn girl, damn. I was hanging out with my in-laws and I was like, I know her! We used to be YouTubers together and now I'm still a YouTuber and she's doing a Super Bowl commercial. It's fine. Don't worry, I feel plenty valued. <laughs> Thanks. Goodbye.